Karen and her man done got remarried. Me and her man done got a new house. Robin and her man done moved in their house. They ain't getting married. Giselle, still bitter. Wendy, thriving. Okay, Candace, thriving. It's all good in Potomac. Thank you for clicking on the video. Welcome back to the channel. This is another review for The Real Housewives of Potomac. Season 6, episode 17. This is a season finale. Altered. <laughs> Altered state of mind. Um, Karen, she's on the phone with her wedding planner. They are all set to go. Unfortunately, Raven will not be there. She is ill. The, the doctors think that she is dealing with a kidney stone. So, so she's not going to be at the wedding. But her son will be there to walk her, I was going to say down the aisle, but up the stairs to Ray. Michael and Ashley, they double date with Juan and Robin. And Robin asks Michael, you know, if he'll be coming around a little bit more. You know, she, she says she missed him. We miss you around the group. You going to be around? And he says he misses them, mainly Juan. Mainly Juan. But he misses them, uh, but doesn't want to be around certain people who speak, you know, ill of his wife. So he ain't doing that. And then, of course, Ashley has to make it, let it be known. Oh, he's talking about Candace and Chris. We know that. <laughs> we know that. But, okay, Ashley, you got to clarify. Um, and then it's a, everybody but Juan. Then it's a whole conversation about Chris and Candace and Chris being Candace's manager. And, you know, that all of that. And... Of course, Ashley and Michael, you know, get a key out of it. You know, they 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 want nothing than to sit around and badmouth Candace and Chris. So they they're all good with that. Um, he want to Chris want to know. I mean, not Chris, not Chris. What's the man name? Michael want to know. You know, how's Chris getting paid? Like how he because because Candace still on her mama payroll. So how he getting paid? And again, Ashley thinks this is so funny. Now see these are the these are the situations that Candace reacts to and then it's don't react that way Candace. Now, she got every right. She got every right <laughs> to like keep her foot on Ashley's neck. If I was Candace, I would never let up. I would be on your ass every time I saw you. Every time I saw you, I would have smoke for that ass because Ashley is insufferable and she sits around with her husband and, and, you know, engages people in conversation about Candace and Chris and their business and their marriage and, and all of that. And then when, when Candace sees it and she reacts to it, like at the reunion, because I know <laughs> at the reunion, we're going to get a your mama. We're going to get a wide face ass. We're going to get all of that. And it's warranted. It's warranted. But like always, we're going to chastise Candace for her reaction. To the way people come at her. To the way people throw shade at her. I don't get it. I really don't get it. <laughs> like it's, it's, it's cause and effect. Like you, something has to happen and then there's a reaction. That's how it goes. People, I mean, there are some people that fly off the handle for nothing. Most cases that ain't her. Most cases that ain't her at all. Um, anyway. Robin, though, in her confessional, um, she sees Michael as an elitist. You know, it's almost like, what's wrong with Candace having a mother that pays for things, that helps her out financially? Like, she's she's set. Ain't that the goal? Generational wealth? She got it. <laughs> like, she the hope and dream of the slave, and yet we're mad at her for it. And I think that that's a, that's a stigma amongst, amongst um, well-to-do black people in general, when you the when you coming from the lower middle class and then you you around the upper middle class or the upper class people, um, people start projecting their insecurities, you know, and it's very much, oh, you're spoiled and your mama taking care of you, trust fund kid, all of that. Yeah, and I would be like, and you right, set for life, so are my kids and my kids' kids. Are you mad that I don't have to work hard like your mama? And your mama's mama. And your mama's mama mama. <laughs> like don't be mad at me. Because my family set me up. For success. Don't be mad. Don't be mad. Candace, should, Candace could get money from her mama. Till she way well into her 50s. If she wanted to. Because that's how long the money is. So I mean so be it. So be it. So I'm with Robin on that. 
Let, let, let's let that alone. Juan checks them all and it's like, we're going to keep it positive. I ain't doing that with y'all. We're going to keep things positive. Ashley says, you're right. There are, you know, way better things than to talk about, you know, than Candace. Like my kids. Whatever, girl. <laughs> um, but anyway, she want to talk about baby Dixon. So she asked them if they, you know, want to get married first or do they want to have the baby first? And why looking like, babe, who told you been talking to her about this? <laughs> we ain't talked about that. We haven't discussed that. We have not discussed that. Um, Juan says that Robin really doesn't want to deal with an infant. And of course she's like, well, yeah, because when we had the boys, you wasn't around. I mean, did you change a diaper? Do you know how to do that? And of course now Juan is like, don't, don't try me like that. I changed diapers. I was around. Don't try to paint no picture here, Robin. <laughs> he don't like that. Um, but she says, you know, it was hard because she had the kids back to back and Juan was not around to help. And I believe her. I believe her. Juan is trying to change the narrative, trying to change the story because he's a changed man now. But we ain't talking about now. We talking about 13 years ago when we had them babies and you was nowhere to be found while I was changing diapers, making bottles, <laughs> all of that. That's what we talking about. I ain't trying to, you know, hold it over your head, but I sure ain't forgot. I sure ain't forgot about that. Um, Michael tells them, you know, that they shouldn't worry about the age factor of it all. You know, that people are having kids older now and, you know, he's an older parent, you know, so it's what's good for us should be good for y'all. And Robin is like, has anybody ever asked you, are you the kids, you know, are you their grandfather? And he says he hasn't gotten that. He hasn't gotten that one yet. He a lie. Them folks at that daycare talk about your ass every day. <laughs> Every day you come in there, them, them folks in there like, he's so old. Like, he looked like he could be the grandfather. That's what we do in daycare. Trust me, I was there. <laughs> okay, we definitely talk about the parents. Definitely. Definitely sit around and talk about the <laughs> talk about the parents. So, I mean, it just comes with the territory. <laughs> anyway, Candace got a record deal. Hallelujah. Um, this is the deal is with E1 Nashville. Um, her co-writer is the one who, you know, helped her get this deal, introduced her to some people, to some people. Her mom is there. Chris is there. And, um, when they sit down and have their meeting or whatever, one of the executives tells her, you know, that she's going to have to keep it real cute on the social media. They're going to have to, we're going to have to figure that out, figure this social media thing out. And at first she's like, oh, I'm good over there. And Chris is like, you fine. You good. Listen, <laughs> I don't know about all that. I don't know about all that. I mean, we can get there. And the guy's like, yeah, you know what I mean. Because they see you over there on the Twitter, Candace. Don't mess around and get dropped from the label because of your mouth, okay? Um, she's grateful. She starts tearing up and crying. And she's just so happy. And I'm happy for her because I know what that's like. <laughs> I know what that's like to have a dream from like, yay high, singing in your, singing in your room or whatever you're doing, you know, pretending that you are living out your dreams and then it comes to fruition like full on a <laughs> whole record deal and all of that yeah i would be overwhelmed with emotion as well because listen it ain't nobody but god it ain't nobody but god candace bless god for the record deal um okay robin and Juan, they meet at her new space for embellished and um she tells him that she's gonna need new inventory you know they're gonna be doing a lot more and you know they're building the house and talking about a baby and all of that but if a baby is gonna be in conversation we gonna also have to talk about <laughs> what i expect you know like she doesn't want to be doing this alone especially not at this big ass age you're not gonna leave me <laughs> with an infant so she's trying to make sure that they're, you know, on the same page with that. And Juan can see where this is going. He sees the, you know, the whole, I'm, we going back in the past, you know, coming back. And he don't want to do that. And so Juan is like, I'm not doing this with you. You're not about to make me out to be no bad guy. I ain't doing it, Robin. So he turned around and leave. He just going to go. <laughs> and Robin is like, I just, what? I was just asking a question. She always just asking a question. Girl, think about them questions before you ask. Because you should have known that, one, that that he wasn't trying to go there with you. Because at the table, he didn't want to go there with you. And here you are again trying to reiterate that Juan wasn't much of help. <laughs> you know, early on when you had your when you had your children. Don't nobody want to get the bad edit. 
And it seems like she's continuously trying to give him that. <laughs> and Robin doesn't want to, I mean, not Robin. Juan doesn't want to do that, so he leaves. Take his mic off and everything. Take this off of me. I'm out. Robin follow him outside, and he's still like, uh-uh. You be trying to try it. Like, it's always what Juan didn't do, but what about what Robin... What, no, it's always about what Juan did do. What about what Robin didn't do? What about that, Robin? Robin's standing there looking cheap, of course, because he just done sped, sped off. He's out of here. Skirt out. <laughs> um, okay, so it's the day of the vow renewal. Giselle, she's riding with Juan and Robin. Um, all the ladies show up. You know, they the bar is upstairs, so everybody, as soon as they get in there, everybody heads upstairs. I don't like Candace pulling up talking about the space is ugly. Now, that wasn't nice. That wasn't nice. You, ain't, you didn't want nobody saying your video was low budget. So you can't be coming, pulling up to my wedding and saying that it's ugly outside. <laughs> okay, like, because I ain't asked you that. Granted, she wasn't walking around telling everybody that, oh, this is ugly. This ain't cute. I don't like this. I mean, she was talking to Chris, you know. I guess I understand how, how why she would, why she would be sitting up saying that sort of thing to her husband. Like when you pulling up, you know, you pull up to a space with your man, and whether it's nice or not, you're gonna you're gonna you know make an observation. I think that's what that was. And since they're mic'd, we hear it all. <laughs> but um, Candace say Candace say it was ugly pulling up to the spot, but it's nice on the inside. It was very nice on the inside. Um. Mia, I mean, not Mia. Wendy got to slide out the car because her dress so tight. She got to slide out the car. She she can't sit down at the table. Wendy, girl, how'd you get in the car? You should have turned around and changed because you couldn't. I know you couldn't get in the car if you couldn't get out. Anyway, um, when she put when she comes in there, when Wendy comes in there, she speaks to. Um, Robin, she's like, Hi, hello, Robin. And Robin is like, hello, Wendy. It was kind of like, hello, Wendy. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> she didn't speak to Giselle at all. And you know, Giselle, she came in and she didn't say anything. You're right. Why would she? Why would she? <laughs> Robin says, I think that she's, maybe she's just upset. Maybe she's just still upset about, I don't know, whatever. She don't fuck with y'all. Okay, and so if I don't fuck with you, I'm not speaking. I'm not speaking to you. Speak to you for what? Talk to you for what? I don't like you. <laughs> so, yeah, no, no. Anyway, Juan um, says to Giselle, you know, they're sitting down now. It's, 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 it's cocktail hour. He says to Giselle, you know, that he heard about she and Juan. I mean, that she, he heard about she and Jamal. And, um, you know, he's like, so you back out there dating and she gonna cover up. Yes. Girl, we can still hear you. Are you dumb? You got a mic on. You covering up, trying to cover up the camera like we can't, like we can't see. <laughs> we can't see, but we can definitely hear. I can definitely still hear. <laughs> trying to cover it up like she being coy. Um, she say producers ask as well. So you gonna tell us about the new guy? That's none of your business, Nora. What's his name, Giselle? None of your business. Is he a celebrity? That's also none of your business. Has he been to Hotel Giselle? That's none of your business. You got another question? Because that's probably gonna be none of your business too. She got such a slick mouth with them people. <laughs> like they not around there in charge. <sighs> Giselle, you the help. So you better relax. Because <laughs> they can send you packing. Okay? They can send you packing. They they, they edit the things over there. You don't want to get the bad edit. You don't want them people. To, you don't want production to be mad with you. You just don't. You just don't. They can make you. They can definitely make you look bad. You know? You can turn into... Um, the villain real quickly. And although she is, she is pretty much the villain. They be trying to make Candace a villain. She got a lot of people that like her, but a lot of people can fall off <laughs> just as quickly, you know, leave it up to production. Um, she say he a 34 year old commentator. I believe it when I see him, IT. Karen, she's waiting to enter the venue. She's backstage talking to Macy Gray, who will be performing. Um, <laughs> Macy Gray, why Macy always look drunk? Macy always be giving this. Yeah, baby. 
because she always she always got this going on. And you gonna and I'm gonna sing for you. You look nice, Karen. I'm gonna sing for you. It's always giving a little like she on like she got a little something in her system, you know? It's either the drink, the brown liquors, or that dope. You know, the dope will have them nodding off and falling all over. I don't know. Macy something about Macy Gray. I don't I don't think she's completely sober out here. I, I just don't know. It's her, her her countenance, her aura is always that. It's always that. Um. Anyway, she enters the room, the venue, goes up the stairs to meet her man, and it's beautiful or whatever. Um. Everybody is, you know, all and googling and all and and all of that, and um. The pastor makes a comment about their foundation being friendship. Giselle's bitter ass in her confessional says, "Oh, that makes sense. For friendship, that makes sense. Seeing as how first, first she was first she was gonna say something real shady, and then say, oh, I'm not gonna say that because we are in good standing. But but it makes sense since she you know slides in everybody's DMs." I can't wait till Sunday because <laughs> they do all this talking in the in the confessionals. And then you got to see me. You got to see me. And then it's backpedal pussy pop. <laughs> uh-uh. Uh-uh. No. Because I thought we moved on, Giselle. And see, and see, here you are still. Whatever. Um. They say their vows, you know, again, and recommit and all of that. It's beautiful. We love to see it. Macy starts to sing, and they have their first dance. Gordon in the crowd talking about, this is a nice dress. Mia says she's going to have to keep her good cat eye on um, on um, Gordon. She's going to have to keep her cat eye on him because he looking. He choosing. <laughs> Michael shows up, actually goes out there to meet him, and when he comes in, of course, he speaks to Juan first. Oh, my God, you look so good. Look at you. Look, You look nice. You look so good. Juan is like, oh, my God, you look good too, babe. You know, it's very much that bromance. It's 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 two-sided. It ain't just Michael. Michael may be the only one in the relationship, but Juan carries just as much as Michael. And I think that Juan just does it for shits and giggles. You know, it's that it's that athlete um, that, you know, from the movies that's very... In tune with his sexuality, he don't have no issues with the with the gays, and so he don't mind the gays flirting with him. He don't mind, you know, he don't care. Equal opportunity flirtation over here. <laughs> so that's what Juan got. That's what Juan got going on. Um, Chris just sitting at the table looking cheap. He ain't really, <laughs> he ain't really got it. Got he don't really see it for getting up and speaking to Michael. You know, Gordon goes over and introduces himself. Ray comes over. You know, people start walking up speaking to. Speaking to Michael, Chris ends up getting up and just standing there, but but he don't say nothing still. Um, it's time to eat, so everybody takes their seats. And Juan is just, he just blurts out, all right, so we're going to squash this today, right? And Michael is like, Psh, shit me. <laughs> I ain't squashing nothing. Um, Chris is just like, you know what, listen, I'm going to just say what I got to say and you can go back to your food. The things that happened last year at Juan and Robin's party, I can forget. I can let it go. We can move forward. And then Chris is like, I mean, and then Michael is like, well, I just don't like people being mean to my wife. So he going to carry. Chris, Michael wants to carry. And so it kind of escalates a little bit because Michael doesn't want to be accountable. Michael is it's very much, I'm the victim. You need to apologize to me. And so Candace says, this is the whitest privilege I have ever seen in my life. I have got to go. It's the whitest privilege. Oh, you don't do nothing wrong. Nothing you do is wrong. You didn't do anything. I gotta go. <laughs> the white privilege is just too much. It's sickening. Good day. And then Michael is like, oh, how far will this go? This girl go? No, you are. It, this might not have been a situation where it was white privilege, but I get where she was going at. Because as it relates to her, she ain't bowing down to no white privilege. I don't give a fuck that you a white man that, that is used to getting away with things. I'm holding your feet to the fire for all that shit. That's Candace's stance on this, and I'm with her 100%. Now, with this situation, 
Did she need to be getting up blurting this? This is white privilege and all of that. No, nah, that was unnecessary. But I get, I think I get where she was driving at. So she gets up and leaves, of course. Um, Giselle wants to know, you know, if they can agree to, you know, at least not disrespect one another's wives. And so they, you know, they can agree to that. Um, Robin has to jump in because Robin is like, because Michael, of course, is standing firm on he didn't do nothing. He's the one that needs that deserves an apology. And Robin is like, now wait a minute. Now you you were you need <laughs> you got something to apologize for as well. We gonna just um you know not forget how you behaved, how you escalated things. You definitely played a part. It was not all Chris. And so of course we flash back and see how it all went down, and we already know. Um. But I appreciated Robin for stepping in and trying, you know, and holding Michael accountable because his wife ain't gonna do it. Um, once they kind of squash things, Juan is like, "Okay, can y'all squash? Can y'all hug now?" That's too soon. We're not hugging. Juan say, "At least can I get a hug?" Of course, Michael wants to hug you. He want to kiss up and rub up and fill up, kiss up and rub up and fill up on you. <laughs> That's what Michael want to do. You already know that, Juan. Um. Okay, so they cut the cake, and to keep the party going, um, Ray gets everybody to the dance floor. At the table, Juan say he got to leave in a minute, and Michael starts laughing like, yeah, me too. Like, yeah, me too. I know where you're going. And Juan is like, yeah, nah, my, my Uber on the way. Robin say, you going to really leave, like, right now? Yeah, I got to go to work. Where you going to work at, Juan? What time is it, Juan? Where you going at, Juan? He lying. He lying. He he lying. <laughs> He's definitely lying. But okay. Um, he gets up and leaves too. Just gets up and heads right on out the door. Um, over in a corner, Candace is about to get chewed out <laughs> by Chris for her white privilege comment. You know, he ain't like that. He felt like he was over the top. And of course, Candace says, nope, it's not over the top because it's true. He It's true. Just like I said, she feels like he he's he's been afforded so many opportunities, you know, to just do all kind of shit and get away with it. He can do what he wants. He can say what he wants. And he thinks that everybody's supposed to bow down to him. And she says she's not doing it. Chris needs to understand that as a black woman, that's just what it's going to be. She's coming from a black woman's stance of here go this white man trying to utilize his white privilege and his power to assert himself. And get what it is he want and manipulate people and manipulate situations and all of that. He's used to doing that and getting away with it. And Candace says she ain't having it. And I'm with you on that, Candace. I really am. Michael can Michael needs to cut this shit. Michael should have been arrested. Michael should have been um sued for millions and millions of dollars a long time ago. Like Michael should Michael sh there should have been consequences to grab an ass on set. You know, there should have been consequences to a lot of things that Michael has done. And yet there's never any. And so I think that's what's really got Candace <laughs> stirred up. Um, Michael and Ashley, speaking of them, they on the dance floor being weird. Um, back in the corner, Candace is yelling at Chris at this point. You know, that motherfucker wants everyone to bow down to him and I'm not doing it. He didn't even want that motherfucker didn't even want to have a conversation. And then Chris is like, I know. You need to shut the fuck up talking to me right now. Right now. And she just turned away and walk off. I'm like, I'm standing there confused like Chris. Like, what? <laughs> so you can yell at him, but he can't, you know, have any type of raised tone. Now he need to shut the fuck up because now you embarrassed. Oh, <sighs> Candace girl. Candace girl. Anyway. Now we got the ending credits, okay? Like I said, I started with that. Ashley wants baby number three. She ain't got no time for no movie. Produce her husband. Me and her um, mom, they're still working on their relationship. She and Gordon are building building a new house with a suite for mom, and it ain't low budget. <laughs> Giselle conveniently isn't dating the 34-year-old commentator anymore. Um, she's working on being more emotionally available. Probably not. She says she'll work in progress. Probably not. Um, Wendy still thriving. Got the candles going. Candace released her EP and it did well. Chris is still her manager. He and Dorothy don't speak no more. Robin and Juan moved into their new home. Congratulations to them. 
Still no wedding day. <laughs> but, I mean, did we think there would be? Um, but Michael still has ideas for the bachelor party. Karen and Ray, they are still in the honeymoon phase. She still takes her ambassador role seriously. She said an, she shot another tourism video for the for Surrey County in Surrey. They happened to me. They had to mention mention that, of course. And the end. That is the end of the season. It was a great wild ride. Okay, we had a good time. <laughs> I had a good time with the girls. Um, Sunday come the the. I was going to say review. What you call this? Reunion. <laughs> Sunday, the reunion comes on and Nicki Minaj will be coming in, stepping in to host. And I can't wait. I cannot wait because I feel like Nicki, Nicki going to get them together. Maybe not Karen because I think Karen is her favorite. Karen's everybody's favorite if you got some sense. <laughs> Karen is everybody's favorite. Um, this So this is going to be good. This is going to be good. <sighs> I can't wait. <laughs> I just can't wait. Anyway, guys, be sure to rate, comment, and subscribe to the channel. It's Call Me Busby, and I'm going to chat with you later. Peace and light. <laughs>